So was it worth it? Um, if I'd have known the weather was going to be like that when Brian asked me to do it, I think I'd have probably, well, I wouldn't have said no, would I? But, but, you know, it would have been a close thing because that would just be signing up for seven days of pure torture. Straight for Kate. Straight for Kate. Straight for Kate. Kate. Bye. Oh, that's yeah. a load of rubbish power balance. That's what church. So we're just there, we're right there. And so, how was that? Land's end to John Groves. It was really, really tough. Uh, way, way tougher than I expected. And we've done it before in 10 days, which was around about 80 miles a day. We did it this time um, in seven days and did the longer route. It meant it was about 130 miles a day. Um, but we got the weather just dreadfully against us. We got torrential rain, massive headwinds. And at one stage we were cycling yesterday going into, into John and Rose was almost the grand finale of the weather because we'd got 25 knots of headwind straight in the face. Um, it was eight degrees centigrade. It was pouring down with rain and it was foggy. And I'm pedaling my little heart out, which by this time has not got any pedaling left in it. And uh, doing about six miles an hour. So to go from Wick, only 17 miles, to two and a half hours, we wanted to shoot ourselves. It was dreadful. This is, this is how they are, look. <laughs> this is what we go through every day to keep, the, to keep the machinery working. So it was a lot tougher than you thought? A lot tougher, yeah. And in fact, you know, it's very rare I would ever say anything like this, but I don't think I could have done another day. If I'd have had another day of those conditions, that headwind, I'd, I just don't think I'd have succeeded. I think it would have killed me off. Now, a few of us stood by the side of the road and, and watched the agony that you all went through. I mean, it must be virtually indescribable. Well, do you know, after that lunchtime where the sun came out, we'd had the wet morning. I think this was, what day was it? Was it Wednesday? We had the wet morning. It was horrible. We had wet breakdowns, everything that morning. Then the sun just popped out for lunch when you arrived. It was a really quite a pleasant lunchtime session. And then we got to um, most of the way to Preston. And all of a sudden there was the most almighty storm that lasted hours and hours and hours to the, to the extent that we were pedaling through water really eight inches, ten inches deep so the feet were going through the water. Cars were coming the other way and bow waving, huge great big waves of water over the top of our heads, which sort of didn't matter because we were already completely drowned. We couldn't, we couldn't be any wetter, so the cars tipping water over the top of us sort of didn't matter. And then I'm cycling through one little town, I think, I think it was just north of Wigan, and this car pulled out on me and I locked the brakes on, just swerved, nearly fell off my bike and stopped that far away from him. And the air was blue. I was so furious. And he quickly <laughs> put the car into gear and skipped round me and drove off quick. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Sounds like you had a catalogue of near near misses. Oh, it was, you know, it was breakdown after breakdown. It was a couple of three or four minor accidents, fortunately. It could have been much worse. Uh, it was just endless, and the weather just relentlessly <laughs> kept torturing us the whole way. And it was already a big enough challenge, 130 miles a day is a big enough challenge. The weather took us out to 11.30 p.m., two nights. So you get into the hotel at 11.30, you've got all your stuff to sort out, all your wet clothing, everything. You're not getting any proper dinner, you know, you, and you're eating half past midnight, bits of snacks or whatever you can get your hands on, and you're back up at six o'clock in the morning preparing for the next day's onslaught. And there's only so much of that the human body can stand. Well, the whole body oh, is yeah. dreadful. I've just fallen asleep on both flights. I caught, you know, everywhere I'm going now, I'm just dropping, I'm falling asleep. My body's just completely and utterly exhausted. So what do you think of it so far? Well, I've cried four times today. So what does that tell you? The shops were shut? 
So has it gone a little bit not quite to plan today? No, the whole week. I mean, they just got such bad weather. It was just yeah. pouring down from start to finish, and it just put so much extra stress and pressure on. What was the the most agonising moment? The most agonising moment, and there was lots of agonising moments that we thought would be the most agonising, but without doubt, it was from Wick to John O'Groats last night, from six, it was at, from 5.30 till eight o'clock, and knowing the finish line was there, and trying to push exhausted legs against that headwind that was absolutely spot on us. 20 odd knots of wind. We couldn't move and we're doing literally, I mean, six miles an hour on the level. Could not move. And the rain was just blasting us. We couldn't work hard enough to get warm. We were frozen, very close on the point of hypothermia. Um, and it just took forever to get to that final, that final leg. No, I'm not much of a shopper actually, Ian. No. I, I shop for bike accessories, that's about it. What was your longest day? Oh, it was, there was a, a million long days. It just seems that every day was forever. 12, 20 miles behind now because oh. we've had an absolute series of breakdowns today. We've had my chain went into, into the spokes, got all wrapped around the spokes. Saturday night, Got to Glencoe. What time did we get? Got to Glencoe at 11:30 on Saturday night, and uh, no, that's Friday night. And on Saturday night, went from Glencoe to Tame, and that was 11:30. So we had two consecutive days where we didn't get into the hotel till 11:30. We were due to be in Lancaster today, and that's another 100 miles, so we're not going to make that now. What's the plan then? <laughs> the plan is panic. <laughs> and then, of course, the final day that I've just described, where it was miserably cold, miserably windy. And we did, although we got to John O'Groats at 8 o'clock that night, it was, a, it was against just massive uh, adversity. Well, my front brake came off as I was going down a hill, which was terrifying. And I screamed as though I was being murdered and Uncle Brian thought I'd been run over. But in fact, I was fine. Nothing, it, I was very, oh. oh I was lucky, because it could have got wrapped in, in a spoke and knocked me off. Ooh. Was or were the upsides? The upside is I think we'll raise over £100,000 for Court of All Children. The other upside is we're a great bunch of friends and we're all looking after each other. So the camaraderie in terms of keeping each other propped up and supporting each other. So as, as a team we perform very, very well. Our support team were, were really good. So yeah, the teamwork was great. We've raised a lot of money for charity. Well, I got down to Brian's the other day, or to, down to Land's End, and he got this at the trailer. So a fully customized electric uh, uh, cycle, Penarello, with the, all the Cordwell, the matching Cordwell uh, children logos on. So that's really cool. As a holiday, were there any, were there any pleasures on that holiday? No. Not really, none. I think we were all too, too tired to inspire anybody, but I suppose if I had to pick somebody out, it's my daughter Libby, who, having never really cycled before, committed to do this ride in January, with only six months left to train. Three months of that was in the real winter where it's difficult. And she just committed to doing it, she trained as much as she possibly could, and she did it brilliantly. So I think in terms of being proud of her, I'm very, very proud because she's the last person on earth really you would have thought that would have wanted to do a challenge of that nature when she was terrified of cycling before, before she got used to it. She was terrified of cycling. Dad broke his bike twice. It's just been very slow progress today. I'm not that keen on exercise in general. She's more of a cerebral person. She's very artistic and creative. So to decide to do that and to do it in that 
against all of those odds in that tremendously difficult set of situations um, it was one heck of an achievement. Would you do it again? I'd never ever in my life want to do anything that miserable again. But you don't know when you commit to these things and we will do another ride. You know, once these old knees are knitted back together, and hopefully they will, and their body's recovered, which the body will definitely recover, you know, I'll be fighting fit again and, um, and we will plan another ride, but I'll never plan one that I've got the slightest thought will give us weather like that.